Uh, generally, people don't uh, break much at all, actually. And I would say most of the scenes are improvised, but we've all worked together a lot. And uh, that's not really the vibe, is kind of cracking each other up. It's, it's more of a getting through scenes. Sometimes it would last five, five to ten minutes long. And uh, I don't recall that happening very much at all. We, we, actually, we actually learn on Waiting for Guffman that if you laugh during a scene when it's being filmed, it only makes the day longer. Christopher, did you have anyone else like in mind for anything else, or were you really clear at, at everybody? Typically what happens is in a movie like this, which is improvised, you have to begin with the premise that you need actors that can improvise. So that it's a fairly small group of people. Normally you're casting a movie, you have uh, hundreds of people potentially, but this is now narrowed down and it's the people I've worked with before. So that, that's where it all begins. Yeah. Was it true that you cast Jane after seeing her in a cereal commercial? We just love Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. I saw Jane, and I, I worked with Jane. I was sh actually shooting a commercial, and uh, we worked together. And then uh, I believe she came, I ran into her in a coffee place, and then she came over to my office, and I basically said, I'd like you to do this. And she said, yeah, but no. She, she was... Because pretty much thinking about, you know, an age. Made him want with the bucks. <laughs> yeah. That's great. I, uh, listen, I hope you eat Frosted Flakes every day now for the rest of because they were so good. I enjoy a bowl of Frosted Flakes. That That's is great. Sure. I hear. So I want to ask about some of the inspiration behind some of the gags in the film. So the first one is those teeth of yours, Eugene, and actually having two left feet. Yes, as if one wasn't enough. I thought for some reason I needed those uh, teeth. Still need them, I think. <laughs> the two left feet was one of the biggest laughs I think Prince and I had in the office. Jerry says, I've got two left feet. He's got two left feet. That is certainly a first. Go uh, get him, pal. Man. I do remember the moment when that came up and then Prince and I just looked at each other <laughs> and I said, no. No, no. Okay, you can't actually have a left foot. Why? Uh, because I think it's too much. I think it's having two left feet, I think might be too. Is it funny? Yes, it's funny, but I mean, I don't think this is this went on for 10 minutes while we were literally going crazy laughing. Uh, so that was a big one. That was one of the big ones. Okay, I need to know the inspiration behind my favorite thing in the film, and that is. God loves a terrier. God loves a terrier. Where did that come from? And did you all make that up on the spot? No, it's written. Did you write it, Eugene, I think? Uh, I wrote, yes, I wrote, I think we had, uh, I don't know whether we had the name God loves a terrier in the, in the outline. No. I can't remember, but no, it was no. written in, I would say. Eugene wrote it, and the great thing about a cast like this is they're all musical. Eugene wrote the song, and then Catherine uh, sang it with him. Yeah. I harmonized. Yes, you I did. did. I did. Yes, you it did. Long. Harmonized the heck yeah. out of that. <laughs> I was 17 seconds to write that. Speaking of, Michael and Michael, I I'm still floored by what you guys did together. You've already packed six kimonos. That's... All right, so here's seven. We're in Philadelphia for 48 hours. Really? Like, what? how the hell were you guys that in sync at all times? Well, here's our relationship. Uh, he was the balloon. I was the string. <laughs> all, I had, um, all I had to do was let him go a little bit, and he would go. Well, I stepped onto a set, and I was working with my idol, you know? I, and that's, that's who Michael McKeon was to me. I'm really just surprised. I, I want to... I would emphasize something Gene said, which is that I, I'm amazed this movie is so watchable considering how much fun we were having. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Usually it doesn't work out that way. If everyone's moving off or just having a good time, it always like goes right in the toilet onto the screen. <laughs> and when you're having a miserable time, it's someone that's like, oh, that was a brilliant movie. It's very clear as you watch the movie 20 years later that these people are having a really good, good time. I heard you guys talking about it before, and we would really be remiss if we didn't talk about the late, great Fred Willard. Why did he put the blood on, put on one of those Sherlock Holmes hats and put a little pipe in his mouth? Are they ever allowed to do anything like that? Christopher, I'm going to start with you. Why was he the perfect actor to play the commentator? Fred uh, was unique, and that's 
not something I, I say a lot of, about a lot of people. Uh, Fred has this demeanor. Uh, I think to the audience, he looks like a regular person, you know, good looking yeah. guy, completely straight person. There's no irony. There's nothing in what he says that uh, betrays his inner thickness. And I think uh, there was only one person that could play that part. And Fred, I believe, Eugene, uh, you can correct me, Fred worked for one day on that film. He did, yeah. He did one day of shooting. Yeah. And it was extraordinary to see to see that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, he was there he was there one day. And and you know, and I and I, I may have mentioned this before, but I, I you know, when the when the idea first came up, I remember saying to Chris, Well, it's a great idea, but how, how do we make the third act funny? How do we make a dog show funny? Because it's got to be a legitimate dog show for this thing to work. Where are the laughs going to be coming from? And it wasn't until Chris said, well, what if Fred is our color commentator during the broadcast? And that just made so much sense. And he would, he actually would have reams of notes that he thought of, you know, five minutes before. But he also didn't even need them. He was somebody who could think in terms of setup, punchline. I would just like to quote uh, Martin Mull on the subject of Fred Willard. He said, you know, Fred doesn't use his turn signal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Perfect. <laughs> oh! oh! What the? Oh, are you all right? Oh. What? Oh, oh, hey, look out. Honey, Do I trip on? Somebody put something down here so I trip? I, I just wonder, where do you guys all think your characters would be? He'd, He'd be married. Yeah. Very happily. Still uh, auditioning. I guess we have some kind of sad podcast, I think. <laughs> like Winky's World or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, good. That's a, that is a good one. We would, we would, have, we would have a podcast. Uh, uh, and Jer Jerry wouldn't have too much to say, I don't think, because, <laughs> you know, he, because of the deterioration that would have gone on upstairs. I think Christy Cummings would be blacklisted from the world of uh, the dog shows for having a uh, bet against herself. Um, uh, and, and probably is running some very unsuccessful scams in some other uh, discipline. So good. Catherine and Eugene, we love seeing you guys, of course, reunite on Schitt's Creek. Ron, how was I to know you were in peril? You keep everything inside like a bashful clam. Do you ever think that we, you, we could see all of you guys reunite again for another film together? I mean, you know that that would, like, explode our brains if that could actually happen. Yes, please. <laughs> Sure. Uh, it's up to Christopher, yeah. isn't it? It would be nice. Okay, Christopher, it's up to you. Let's see what we got. Yes? Nod. He says yes. I have a great nursing home pitch, uh, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got a Civil War reenactment pitch for you, Chris. 